All right, it's almost the holidays, and during the holidays, what do we do more of? Drink a little booze. Not a little, drink a lot of booze. Um, also, it's a pandemic, and I've heard and read that booze sales are way up. But some of us don't want to drink booze. Some of us wants to wear booze, right? So we can get drunk off of our perfumes. I've got 32 boozy fragrances here, and today I'm ranking them. So my favorite is at number one. My least favorite is at number 32. This is my entire collection of boozy fragrances. And if you want to find out what they are and how they're ranked, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Boozy fragrances, that's what it's all about today. I'm gonna tell you what my favorite is and what my least favorite is. Obviously, I have it for a reason. I have it because I enjoy it, but of course my number one is my favorite. So I'll let you know what the fragrances are, but before I do, as always, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, there's a subscribe button below and also click the bell icon so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So how many of you like boozy fragrances? Let me know. Uh, it's one of my favorite styles and uh, there was a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. Of course, it is the holidays coming up and we do tend to drink a little more during the holidays and there is a pandemic and I've bred and heard that uh, the booze sales are way up. But the other thing is, I've read that the beauty industry and the perfume industry is also, you know, raking it in, uh, lots of sales. Uh, so both industries seem to be doing well, and some of us don't drink at all, but enjoy perfumes. Some of us drink and enjoy perfumes, so I thought, you know what, let's combine the whole boozy thing uh, in perfumes. So 32 total fragrances, and we're gonna start right off the bat with this particular one, Jazz Club from Maison Margiela. So this is considered an oriental fragrance, features rum, tobacco, vanilla. There's some uh, pink pepper, there's some styrax and vetiver. It's a masculine offering, but definitely focusing on the tobacco and rum. It's a smooth wear, it's a soft wear, it's not sharp and it's not exciting to me. That's kind of why it's way at the bottom. So that's at 32. It's a Maison Margiela's uh, Jazz Club. At number 31, uh, it's uh, this one right here, Molten Brown's Bizarre Brandy. So this one's lower at the bottom uh, because to me it's not ultra boozy and plus it reminds me of a few other fragrances. It reminds me of a, an Ecoutal fragrance, it reminds me of a Dior fragrance, it also reminds me of a L'Artisan fragrance, but this is the kind of uh, boozier version of that fragrance. Um, but still, it's not ultra boozy. It's a little more gourmand than lots of booze. Anyway, features notes of maple, coffee, tobacco, cedar, of course brandy and cinnamon. So that's Bizarre Brandy from the House of Molten Brown. Mugler's Pure Malt, Malt is next, and this is, uh, the reason it's here is because currently I'm going through that whole love-hate thing, and I'm at the p p point of hate more than love currently. Something, I don't know, maybe it's my chemistry that always like, loves it and then hates it again. But it was a love at first sniff for me way back in the early 2010s. It features uh, lots of uh, dried fruit notes, uh, malt and peat and whiskey and orange and patchouli. It's considered an or oriental woody fragrance. So uh, you might like it. Uh, check it out. I, I don't know how it is currently with uh, the whole um, L'Oreal, uh, you know, brand takeover. So I don't know if it's going to change in smell. I don't know if it's going to improve in smell. And I'm hoping that they will release an Eau de Parfum so we can get a more beefier version of this fragrance. Anyway, that's Pure Malt from the house of uh, Mugler. Next, going to Carolina Herrera's CH Men Privé. Woody Spicy Fragrance featuring whiskey. It's a whiskey boozy version of the original CH Men Privé. I mean, the, the original CH Men. And you know, I do enjoy this. I just wish it was a little more potent. And and for me, there's lavender in here and cardamom, and they definitely are uh, amped up uh, as far as smells go. And, uh, you know, it smells great. It's a fantastic smell. Just wish it was, you know, a little more beefier as always. But if you like them lighter and you like boozy, I would recommend uh, CH Men Privé from Carolina Herrera. I feel like the designers are kind of here in this particular section because the next one is also a designer. It's from the house of John Barbatos. It's Dark Rebel. Um, you know what I like about this one? The booziness, the tobacco, but also because there's this greenish uh, fur balsam note that's really, really awesome. But you know, there's a leather touch in here. It's considered an uh, oriental woody 
slash leather fragrance. There's a major leather touch with this one. And I kind of like it. You know, you can smell the leather. It's slightly animalic, but it contrasts ni nicely with the, the greenness of the fur balsam. But there is that whiskey note in here that kind of like adds this like, you know, festive kind of a, a experience. These are pretty inexpensive to get, at least they were at one point. I'm not sure how inexpensive they are currently, but it's a great offering from the house of John Barbatos. It's Dark Rebel. Well, there's two fragrances from the house of uh, Tiziana Terenzi. This one ended up at the bottom. Even though it's boozy, I don't think it's like your booze fest. This is Laudano Nero uh, from Tiziana Terenzi. It's considered an oriental spicy. It does feature lots of cognac, but there are such contrasting notes in here that it kind of like toned down the booziness. It's still there though, it's boozy, but there's this ashy note, like a tobacco ash in here uh, that really like tones down the booziness, which it's good for this particular fragrance, but I wouldn't call this your like total booze fest of a fragrance. But it's a great scent if you're not saying like it's your ultra boozy fragrance, if that makes sense. But uh, lots of tobacco, incense, ash, amber, oud, and honey. That's Lada No Nero from the house of uh, Tiziana Terenzi, and it basically translates to uh, dark uh, labdanum. So next, go into a house called Byredo. It's Accord Oud. So here, we're experiencing some of the less boozy fragrances. That's kind of one of the reasons why they're ranked lower. And this is a boozy fragrance, but it's very, very oudy, and it's also very fruity from blackberry. So blackberry oud rum leather saffron patchouli clary sage it's one of my favorite uh, western oud fragrance and i think this is also one of my favorite byredo fragrances and when you're wearing it you experience the booziness the fruitiness and of course the oud along with some of the other notes leather and uh, saffron and things like that accord oud a great scent from the house of byredo so next going to a house called uh commodity and it's whiskey once again it's ranked lower it's a boozy fragrance but it's not your booze fest uh, i think it's more of a woody fragrance i would call this a woody spicy and i forgot to say what this is i would call this one an oriental spicy uh, once again also the lot of nero is also oriental spicy but whiskey i would call it a woody spicy it's a very woody experience with light vanillic touches there are some aromatic lavender touches but it's all about mahogany oak cedar oak is known for whiskey obviously patchouli and plums so it's slightly fruity it's patchouli it's woody lots of woods and spices i think basically so that's commodities whiskey currently they've changed the name on that it's no longer called whiskey uh look that up on my channel i've done several videos about that fragrance it's currently only available in a limited edition form so if you've ever worn it and you like it you can still get it now so some of you might be a little ticked off that this is here but i'm putting it here it's initio parfums Privé's side effect so why is this one here so you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Jazz Club. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of depth to it. It's not like, it's just very smooth. It's like a very cozy, smooth, uh, non-contrasty, kind of like a one-dimensional fragrance. Everything kind of blends in together and it just becomes this like kind of a, just a cozy, boozy oriental fragrance. It's considered an oriental fragrance. There's some tobacco in here. There's some rum, vanilla. There's some cinnamon in there as well. But you know, I want a little oomph. I want a little excitement with this one. I want some contrasts of notes, but since everything is blended smoothly, it just wears kind of one-dimensional for me. So it's not as exciting as I wanted it to be. That's why it's here, but it's a, it's a pretty darn good uh, fragrance. And there are some of you that really enjoy this one I can tell that you're a fan of it let me know if you are so that's side effect next it is a fragrance from the house of imaginary authors called Saint Julep now this one uh, it's lower once again I don't find it ultra boozy it's it's an aromatic fragrance but it features sugar mint tangerine whiskey water note ambergris and magnolia you know, I love this one in the summertime, um, and I think the, the warmth of your body and the sweetness with the sugar kind of brings out the, the whiskey notes a little more, but in the cool, I don't get it as boozy. It's more about the mint and sugar and uh, tangerine for me, but either way, it's a great scent, and I love wearing it in the summertime with that whole whiskey note. It's considered an aromatic fragrance, and that's Saint Julep. Next up, it's going to the house of Bortnikov, and this is Sayat Nova. I've mentioned this in a video last week as well. This is an intense fragrance. It's ultra woody 
And I mentioned last week that lately I've been testing it out and I'm getting coconuts from it. So there's a coconutty touch in there somehow. Most likely it's coming from the contrast of magnolia and apricots. But this one's known as an oriental woody fragrance. It's lots of vanilla, lots of apricots, and then of course some rum. But I think what really contrasts with those notes are the two kinds of oud uh, featured in here. And then it's ultra smoky on me with some oak moss and narcissus note. It's a beast of a fragrance, plus of course as you can see the color is so dark so be careful where you spray it but this is an oriental woody as i said and it's Sayat nova from uh, bortnikov you know i'm happy to be doing this video because as i said i do enjoy uh boozy fragrances and actually while i was planning this video out a couple weeks ago um I tested a fragrance that I hadn't smelled for quite a while and I'm going to let you know about it when I get to it but I discovered that it was such a great fragrance and it has such a great trail on me that I'm when I'm moving around I can smell it it's fantastic but great to to discover fragrances that you've put away and haven't worn for a while either way next up is Chris Collins Harlem Nights it's considered a woody spicy it's got lots of rum sandalwood patchouli nutmeg orris saffron and vanilla and for me out of the bottle it's not as boozy on me it just the booze just opens up and gets a lot more boozier which I really really do enjoy and this is one of those other fragrances that I hadn't spoken a lot about but I was you know going back through my videos to see what's boozy because sometimes I forget and if I'm forgetting any fragrance obviously I apologize but uh, this is 32 different fragrances and uh, it's a little difficult to keep up with everything but this one is, is fantastic if you guys don't know this house do check it out it's Chris Collins uh, Harlem Nights with its um, prominent rum note and again it's considered a woody spicy fragrance now this next fragrance I'm featuring in here it's not n including any known boozy notes but for me it's a boozy vanilla and it's Guerlain's Spiritus Double Vanille uh, Vanille um, so this one when you smell it out of the bottle it smells like you know boozy uh, cooking or baking vanilla and for me I've cooked so much with baking van vanilla I can totally see the booziness in there I've actually tasted it and I can taste the alcohol in there and this to me smells like there's some kind of like bourbon uh, it's like a bourbon vanilla or whiskey or something similar to that even though it mostly features uh, you know benzoin vanilla incense pink pepper cedar some floral touches as well it's a great scent it's totally boozy it's a vanilla, it's delicious, it's cozy. It's a Spiritus Double Vanille from uh, Guerlain. Next, going to a house called Nishane, it's Fan Your Flames. And Fan Your Flames, again, is a, a very, it's an interesting fragrance. It's like a chameleon for me. I get like sandalwood and I get, um, coffee. I don't, I don't know what it is about this fragrance. Even though they don't mention those notes, there's some kind of a coffee-like uh, quality in here, but it's considered an oriental woody with coconut, tobacco, rum, tonka beans, cedar, and oak moss. But it's like a boozy coffee liqueur kind of a thing with lots of woods. Uh, you like drinking like, let's say you're drinking like some kind of a coffee liqueur at a uh, wood chipping factory or something because it's very very woody for me I don't know it's an interesting fragrance I don't uh, sometimes fragrances smell exactly like what they are and sometimes they smell completely different and this is one of the the fragrances that smells completely different than what I'm um, reading that uh, the notes are credited for anyway that's Nisha Ney's Fan Your Flames uh, it's considered an oriental woody fragrance next going to Strangers Perfumery and this is Cigar Rum I don't have Cigar Rum Intense I have Cigar Rum and in fact I have a video comparing Cigar Rum to Javois Pavillon Rouge Jazz Club from Maison Margiela in fact I could have added side effect to that video as well because I find them to be kind of very similar smelling in smells just just going a little different directions but cigar rum is considered a woody fragrance with lots of rum dried fruits with the prune and cherry there are some raisin tobacco resins oak vetiver amber seaweed mandarin orange it's a very very unique fragrance with lots of different notes so the end result is your typical kind of like a fruity a boozy tobacco fragrance if that makes sense it's a great scent uh, and it's also under 
Uh, it's, un it's also under $100 for a 30ml bottle, so it won't break your bank, and uh, I think it's a pleasant one for you to wear. So check out Strangers Perfumery Cigar Rum. Next, going to a fragrance from the House of the Different Company, and this is Oud for Love, a very, very delicious Oud fragrance that's gourmand and boozy. It's an oriental woody, it's lots of oud, it's caramel, it's whiskey, it's amber, cloves, castorium, so there's, it's got some animalic touches. It's created by one of my favorite perfumers, Bertrand de Chafoul, and it's a very, very long-lasting fragrance. You've got to be into the idea of uh, boozy and gourmand with oud fragrances. So that's what that one is, uh, an oriental woody fragrance from the house of the different company, and it's oud for love. Next up, going to the house of uh, Javoy, it's a uh, Pavillon Rouge. So, once again, this is kind of similar to Cigar Rum, Maison Margiela's Jazz Club, and Side Effect, but for some reason I'm digging this particular one the most. It's ranked a little higher, obviously. So this one is an Oriental Woody. It's featuring the tobacco and uh, rum again, or whiskey or rum. This one has both whiskey and rum. There's a leathery touch. There's benzoin, there's vanilla, tea, there's an ebony wood, sesame, coffee, and spices. It's, it's Javoy, but it's not Javoy, you know? It's Javoy as in it's got the Javoy quality of styles and notes, but it's not like your beefiest, most strongest uh, Javoy fragrances like Private Label and uh, Psychedelic and Incident Diplomatique and things like that. But you know what? I think they did a good job with the way this fragrance is. They, they couldn't have done more. Um, it's a very, very smooth and uh, uh, soft, uh, creamy, uh, almost uh, glossy kind of an experience, uh, wearing experience. So that's Pavillon Rouge. So once again, we're going to another fragrance created by Bertrand de Chafoul, and this is Sequoia from the house of Comme des Garçons. It's a boozy fragrance, but woody. Uh, it's a woody, it's considered a woody fragrance, but I'm, uh, I'm saying it's a, a boozy because it's got rum in it. So it's rum and sequoia wood, mahogany, oud leather. Really, really good, you know? This is a, a very, very good fragrance. In fact, I'm so happy that they re-released it because it was discontinued. It came in the red bottles, but now it's part of the olfactory library. And I just like the combination of that very, very smooth um, red kind of woods of mahogany and sequoia. Uh, and I went to uh, Sequoia High School, by the way, which is here in the Bay Area. So it's a given that I really like this one because it was lots of Sequoia trees around. And it's nicely contrasted with the rum note, you know? It's, it's amazing. Anyway, Comme des Garçons Sequoia is a great fragrance. If you don't know it, do check it out. So next, go into the House of Cartier and their, one of their latest releases for men, if I can find their label because it's so hard. It's Pacha de Parfum. Pacha de, Cartier de Par uh, Pacha de Cartier Parfum is what it's called. So this is an oriental fougere focusing on sandalwood with lots of liqueur boozy touches, but there's also uh, uh, balsam fir in here and tonka beans. You know, I do recognize the familiarity of its original, like the original fragrance, which was uh, launched in the early 1990s. Uh, but you know, it's definitely modernized and it's definitely boozified and it's certainly the oriental fougere style, which I really, really love here. So this is a great release. Release. One of my favorites of 2020. It's from the house of Cartier. It's Pacha de Parfum Cartier. Next, go into the house of Zerzhov. It's Uden. And Uden is an aromatic, spicy fragrance. And you know, it's got a boozy rum note in here, but lots of citruses. So this is part of the trio of citruses that I did a video on last summer. If you haven't caught that video, please do. It's a uh, Three different citruses, Neo, Kobe, and Uden. And this is a, a very, very beautiful fragrance. It's a more of a dense, uh, not a fresh kind of a citrus, but still has fresh touches. But it's an, a nice contrast of lots of citruses with rum and vanilla. There's some guyac wood, there's some coffee note, and sandalwood. A great scent. Um, I ranked it pretty high because I really love this one. This is one of my favorites. In fact, the three of those fragrances, Kobe, Neo, and uh, uh, this one, Uden, are just some of my favorites from this house. But, you know, the booziness is not its strongest, if that makes sense. So I gave it credit for the fact that it's one of my favorite fragrances, but it's not your ultra boozy, boozy, boozy fragrances, if that makes sense. So that's Uden from the house of Zerzhov. So this is a fragrance that I have not spoken a lot about. In fact, uh, it's one of my favorite fragrances. It's one of my favorite bottles. It's from the house of Luban, and, uh, Luban, and this is Idol, this one right here. So this is a fragrance that's called woody, uh, considered a woody spicy fragrance, and it features lots of rum. The rum is pretty fantastic here, and it wears beautiful beautifully. It wears really beautifully. It has ebony wood, and I feel like the, the bottle captures the ebony wood um, totally perfectly. Uh, rum, saffron, ebony wood, leather, woods, and amber, created by Olivia Giacobetti. It's a, just a very, very beautiful 
woody spicy fragrance that I love wearing it but you know what there was a fragrance that was inspired a little bit by this and another fragrance that's also on the list um, and I love that one even uh, more. If you guys know which one it is, do put a comment down, but you'll find out eventually. So that is Luban Idol. And the next one is, uh, oh man, the one that I rediscovered recently. I, I bought it uh, and I did a video of top 10 La Ligue fragrances and I put it away and I was testing it out to see how boozy it is. It is so fantastic, guys. This Ombre Noir from La Ligue, amazing and the, the the fragrance the projection and it's a sillage that you leave behind the trail of course when you're walking around you can smell yourself and this is really really sexy it's just a great great combination of cognac tobacco myrrh uh, wow it's an oriental spicy or oriental woody fragrance once again and it's got great great uh, uh, notes in it and it's a, one fantastic wearing experience so of course the cognac is the boozy touches the the smoky uh, tobacco I think that's what's really kind of um, contrasting really wonderfully with the cognac the myrrh adds a slight sweet uh, resinous touch fig leaf throws in a kind of a um, bitter kind of a spicy peppery kind of a touch of mint cinnamon olibanum papyrus bergamot wonderful fragrance it never got its official release here it was a middle eastern exclusive but there were some at the discounters and i, I bought it uh and of course now i'm like rediscovering it since i did the top 10 la Ligue video and now i need a backup bottle because this is fantastic. I love it. But it's ranked a little low because I need to test it a little more and I like some of the other fragrances a little more. Either way, La Ligue Ombre Noir, let me know if you're a fan of that one. I'd like to find out how many of you guys have it and wear it and love it. Next, going to the house of Amouage, it's Overture Man. Once again, this is so sexy. Really, really beautifully sexy utilizing cognac. But it's got uh, it's it's considered a woody spicy fragrance, but lots of myrrh, and there was myrrh in here as well. There are different fragrances. It's cognac and myrrh here, and cognac and myrrh here, but they go in total different directions. Uh, this one has sandalwood, animalic notes, cardamom, a little bit of cumin beautifully sexy it's very very sexy it's animalic but it's it's the right amount of animalic if you're into the idea of animalics but you don't want an overdose of animalics uh, then this might be it for you if you're not into the idea of animalics you might not dig this one I find it to be musky uh, kind of reminds me of the muskiness uh, of Frederick Mall's uh, Musk Ravageur before it became Estee Lauder because I felt it was a little more musky and less um, gourmand at the time but either way, what a sexy fragrance. I'm glad it's launched here. It's wonderful to wear. So it's Amouage over Tremain. If you don't know it, do check it out. It's a great boozy fragrance with animalic muskiness, you know? Are you bored of boozy fragrances? Are you a fan of boozy fragrances? Please put a comment down and let me know if you like any of the fragrances I've spoken about so far. So the next one is from the house of Nasomato. It's Baraunda. Baraunda is about whiskey, woody notes, ambred seeds, ambroxan, rose, and musk. Really, really delicious, boozy fragrance. I love it. And this one actually, somebody said it reminds them of... Um, Angel Share and uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because of the Angel Share video and I've acquired uh, a few additional uh, boozy fragrances that I haven't spoken much about of course Overture Man and Ombre Noir this one but this one I can see the similarities to Angel Share but for me it reminds me of Intense Cafe there's some rose in here and I think that's what's doing it something about the there's a creamy, smooth uh, quality about this fragrance. Uh, and along with the rose, as soon as I smell it, it reminds me of Intense Cafe. I don't know if you guys get that or not, but either way, what a beautiful fragrance. This is a, not one of the beasts from uh, Nasomato. In fact, I don't really consider Nasomato's fragrances ultra beastly, but uh, the subtleties of this one is amazing and it smells fantastically boozy with the whiskey. Uh, I think what I like about this one is Ambrette, which is musky. It's a prominent note here and also the Ambroxan. And I, to the overall combination is really, really beautifully sexy. So that's Nasomato's Barra Onda. I'm sure there are fans of that one. Next up, going to the house of Baikillian, it's Black Phantom. And Black Phantom is a really, really delicious fragrance. It's boozy plus it's gourmand, which I like. And I think Killian does really great 
gourmand boozy fragrances. I know they do a lot of great um, boozy fragrances, but this is combining the gourmand touches as well. It's considered an oriental with dark chocolate, rum, caramel, coffee, sugar, almonds, sandalwood. What a great combination of notes. Uh, it's beautifully done and I love wearing it. It's cozy, it's comfortable, and it reminds me of Irish coffees uh, from a place that's historic here in San Francisco called Buena Vista. It just reminds me like I'm drinking the, this boozy um, a coffee a drink uh, from that um, famous uh, bar here in San Francisco. So that's Black Phantom from by Killian. And then next, uh, I'm going to the house of Tiziana Terenzi and by Killian once again. It's a tie. It's Ursa with Straight to Heaven. I don't have my bottle of um, Straight to Heaven Extreme here, so I'm featuring these two. And they're both considered oriental spicy fragrances, and I prefer one over the other. I prefer Ursa's uh, strength and intensity and a slight uh, animalic leather touch in here. But what it, oh, they're both known for is the patchouli, the rum, the, the fruity notes. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, those are what the trademark notes are in both. But this particular one features oud as well. Uh, there's some tobacco, there's some incense, uh, and of course, uh, the leather, which is a totally standout. And this one is just beautiful. I feel like in the cold, it's a cooler fragrance. In the, in the summertime, if you wear something like this, both of them actually, the vanilla and the, um, the fruits just pop and develop more and makes it a sweeter experience which I really find very very sexy but because they both have patchouli in it they're both fantastic smelling anyway Tiziana Terenzi's Ursa and uh, Straight to Heaven from the house of um by Killian are great fragrances. Next up, going to the house of Killian once again. It's Angel Share, and I'm also gonna highlight Apple Brandy as a tie once again, because I don't have my Apple Brandy here with me. I'm not, not sure where it's at. I lose bottles sometimes. But we're gonna go ahead and highlight Angel Share. It's considered an oriental with cognac, cinnamon, tonka beans, praline, vanilla, oak, and sandalwood. I really love the way it smells. I just wish it was a little thicker and a little more denser, and uh, Killian fragrances are kind of on the thin side, I, I mentioned in my review of this one. But as a smell, it smells fantastic. It smells like a boozy version of Wajan or something like that. Uh, Ombre Narguile, um, Farah from the House of Breakcore Paris, which I've done videos about. Um, so, you know, they remind me of one another. Even Sushi Imperial from Boys 1920, it reminds me of. But this goes down really fast because I just love the way it smells. I keep wanting to wear it more and more. It's delicious. It's a very, very delicious, boozy gourmand. Anyway, no, uh, that's not another one from the House of Bikillion. And uh, Apple Brandy, Kind of sort of similar, it's less gourmand, it's more boozy, and um, I don't have it with me, unfortunately. Next up, going to the house of Frederick Mall. Is it the correct one? Yeah, this is a Promise, this one right here. Oh my god, this is so good. Booze Fest. But this one reminds me of Calvados. It's a French liqueur that I've had. It's ultra strong. Uh, I like the fruitier versions. This is considered an oriental. It has cipriol note, apples, rose, patchouli, labdanum, pink pepper, and cloves. Really, really delicious. I love the way it smells. It's, in fact, in my building that I live in, a lady wears the same fragrance. And one day I told her, I'm like, are you wearing Frederick Mall Promise? She goes, how do you know that fragrance? She didn't even know I was into perfumes and stuff. So we spoke about this fragrance for a long time pre-pandemic, obviously. So, a great scent. I love it. It's the least expensive of the uh, Middle Eastern uh, Desert Gems collection fragrances, and it's the one that doesn't have oud, obviously. So, that is Promise from the house of Frederick Mall. Next up, going to the house of Raja Parfums, it's Creation E. Man, this is so good. One of my favorites from Raja Parfums. Um, there's, it's considered an oriental fragrance. Uh, lots of cognac, vanilla, tobacco, benzoin, ginger, black pepper, jasmine. There is a little bit of a fizziness in there, like a ginger ale type quality. And I think the ginger working with some of the notes uh, gives you this like fizzy quality. But I love that about it. It's just a great quality fragrance and it smells fantastic, lasts a long time. Now, I would have featured the cologne version of this one. I, I prefer this one more than the cologne version. Version. I like Scandal uh, Pour Homme Parfum Cologne more as a cologne, but in its original form in the Parfum version, this is fantastic. So that's Creation E from the house of uh, Raja Parfums, or in Europe, the rest of the world, it's called Enigma. Three more left, guys. Can you guess what my number one is? You'll never guess. Can you guess? <laughs> number three. Going to the house of Parfum the Empire, it's Ombre Russe, this one right here. My God, this is so good. It's an amber, it's an oriental spicy. Um, but you know, even though it has vodka in the notes, 
uh, vodka, I left off vod vodka fragrances off the list because vodka doesn't tend to go boozy for me. Like gin, vodka, they don't tend to go boozy. Um, I also have left off roses on ice, obviously, because it has gin. But this one, it's something, I feel like there's rum, there's uh, whiskey, or there's... Um, uh, cognac or something in here in addition to the vodka that gives me this booziness. It's amber, vodka, incense, leather, champagne, cinnamon, and tea. Maybe the champagne with the vodka give me this booziness, but I think it's the overall combination. There's also a, a really, really beautiful a fruity touch in here, like dried fruity touch, an overall beautiful, beautiful, uh, warm and spicy and oriental qualities of this fragrance. It's a great, great amber. Uh, one that a lot of people don't talk about, but wonderful smelling. It's a Parfum de Empire Ombre Russe. Great scent if you don't know it. The next one is uh, this one, Fahrenheit Le Parfum. Uh, this is my number two. So number two Le Parfum uh, from Dior and it's Fahrenheit Le Parfum. Oh my god, this is so good. The smell is just fantastic. It's considered an oriental spicy, uh, lots of vanilla here, violet leaf. The, the contrast of the violet leaf and the vanilla Beautiful combination. There's suede leather in here, there's rum, there's licorice, mandarin orange. Man, it's good. It's really, really good. Uh, probably, uh, you know, I was tired of uh, Fahrenheit as a scent, the original. This, when it came out in 2014, I picked it up the day they had put it out in Paris because I was on a holiday there. And this kind of reignited my love for the original, even though this is so different in comparison to the original, you know? But, you know, it still reminds me of the original Eau de Toilette currently. So anyway, Fahrenheit Le Parfum at number two. Can you guess my number one? This is my number one. I absolutely cannot get enough of this fragrance. I know there's a lot of hate for it. There's a lot of love for it. Bentley for Men Intense. I know there's so many fragrances here, but this one... This one dries down so sexy on me. It's fantastic and I love it. I just love it. I know there's people complaining about reformulations and things like that, but this fragrance is just a great fragrance, plus the fact that it's so cheap. And my number one is a cheapie. Bentley for Men Intense is considered an oriental spicy. There's notes of rum, incense, woody notes, uh, leather, benzoin, cinnamon, black pepper. And there are similarities to these two fragrances. And for me, I find that this one is similar to this, plus a Chambre Noir, a leather fragrance. So basically, maybe it was inspired by those two fragrances. I don't know. Whatever they did, whatever Nathalie Lorson did, she created a, a I don't want to use the master, word masterpiece, but something that's really, really great. I love this one. It's my number one, Bentley for Men Intense. Now I'm drunk off of all these perfumes. Are you guys drunk too? Um, anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this video of uh, my booziest fragrances ranked today. I've covered a lot of uh, videos on the channel this year on boozy fragrances. I probably will not do much more uh, going forward, uh, unless there's a fragrance that just launches and it's boozy, obviously. But let me know if you're fans of these 32 fragrances that feature different liqueurs like whiskey, rum, and cognac. Let me know which is your favorite. And if you had a choice, what would your top 10 be? Or maybe even top 5. Put a comment down so I can find out. Last but not least, let me know what I've missed. I know there's a lot of fragrances out there. I don't own every single one of them. But what would you put on this list uh, for a future video? Put a comment down and let me know what those fragrances are. Anyway, guys, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope you're all ready for the holidays. Stay safe. Uh, other than that, please do like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.